So, can you see my screen now? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's here. Um, but it doesn't go to the presentation mode. How do I? Okay. Just Oh, well. I can't full screen. Sorry? I can't full screen the the slides. I don't know why. The full screen uh, is not uh, right. Maybe oh. you start the presentation then. Is it full screen now? Uh, uh, do you see the first no. slide? No, I see your your browser window. Oh. Um um, okay. Let's do it. Um, so maybe start your, your presentation and, and then share your screen and select the window where you have your presentation open. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. Now it should work. Does it work now? Do you see the first slide? Yes, now, now it, it works. Please okay. go ahead. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mariam, as Raul just said. Uh, I am a computational biologist by education, and my research is mainly focused on molecular dynamics of biomolecules. I did a PhD at Nanyang Technological University of Singapore, and my postdoc training was mainly at Sharif University of Technology under Reza Ajdadi supervision. I recently became an assistant professor at Sharif Bejdi University. So today I'm going to talk about uh, my ongoing project on the immune response. You might think that this is a sarcastic title, but it's not because I'm going to talk about the molecular mechanism of immune response in the presence of sugar moieties. So it is in fact a sweet talk. IL-1 family of cytokines play critical roles in triggering the immune response in several conditions such as injury, infection, and stress, and in more serious situations such as cancer and arthritis. Because of these important roles, they have been the center of attention for many experimental and computational studies recently, and we used uh, and we looked at their molecular functioning with molecular dynamics simulations. So I will briefly mention how they work in the cell. IL-1 family of cytokines has 11 members, and they bind to the receptor, to the signaling receptor, IL-1 receptor type 1, IL-1R1 on the cell surface uh, to send signals to the cell. IL-1R1 um, contains an extracellular domain that here is shown that it has three subdomains in its extracellular domain. Here they are shown in um, red, yellow, and uh, red, blue, and yellow, and they are connected by two linkers. And IL-1R1 also contains a transmembrane domain and an intracellular TIR domain. What happens is that a cytokine binds to the extracellular domain of IL-1R1, two subdomains D1 and D3 of the extracellular domain, and this interaction leads to conformational changes that facilitate binding of the IL-1 receptor accessory protein, that is a, a, a protein, a transmembrane protein, similar to IL-1R1, in a structure and in shape, and then forms the functional assembly that sends signals and triggers the immune response. Uh, that, con uh, that mechanism of action and ligand binding has been explained by several X-ray crystal structures. But one critical factor was missing in that mechanism, and that was the extracellular domain of IL-1R1 is decorated with sugars or glycans in vivo. And these glycans are shown, has been shown to play critical roles in IL-1R1 functioning, but they were mainly not considered um, in, the, in all the studies. So the process uh, of uh, attachment of sugars or glycans or carbohydrates to IL-1R1 is an enzymatic process known as glycosylation. And uh, you can see its role here, important folding, the stability, trafficking, ligand binding, etc. 
So I used molecular dynamic simulations to model the glycosylated IL-1R1 in two different states, in the APO when there is no ligand bound and in the IL-1-beta bound, that is the agonist ligand bound to the IL-1R1 and studied the conformation and dynamics, etc. All the simulations I presented here are, are full atom simulations and I have carried them out uh, with AMBER package. So our simulations showed that uh, the glycosylated IL-1R1, the distance between center of masses of two subdomains, subdomains one and three of the IL-1R1 decreases upon glycosylation, you can show here, and the receptor adapts a compact conformation. Uh, at the right side of the plot, um, the bottom figure is the compact conformation. And this dashed line shows the, uh, the value, the distance value between D1 and D3 in the compact conformation crystal structure. Also, uh, cross-correlation matrices of the two systems shows that there are more anti-correlated motions between D1 and D3 upon glycosylation, so the receptor mainly adapts the compact form. Then we ask, so how does the glycosylated IL-1R1 binds to IL-1-beta, that it's basically a stimulating ligand in the cell? Binding free energy between IL-1-beta, that is the agonist, and IL-1R1 uh, in the unglycosylated form of IL-1R1, that is shown with blue bars and the partially glycosylated IL-1R1 that is shown with red bars and the fully glycosylated IL-1R1 does not change a meaningful um, difference between the binding energy. So we concluded that glycosylation does not directly affect IL-1-beta, IL-1R1 binding, but it can indirectly regulate this process by maintaining the IL-1R1 in the compact conformation. When IL-1R1 is in the compact conformation, the binding site is occluded, so it cannot bind to any cytokine. So it's, uh, it reduces the, its binding affinity to IL-1R1, but not directly. And aside from uh, the role of glycans uh, in, the, in the dynamics of the extended and compact conformation of IL-1R1 and the role of IL-1 cytokines binding to it, Another that we studied so far, another important factor to, to form the functional assembly in binding is binding of the receptor accessory proteins. Here I carried out again conventional and accelerated molecular dynamics to study the role of um, the interaction of IL-1 receptor accessory protein with the compact and extended IL-1R1. So, uh, here, um, we showed that um, the compact, the complex of compact IL-1R1 that is here shown in magenta with IL-1RACP is very abiding. Here you can see the final conformations from my MD simulations of the compact complex, and you can see that IL-1R1 mainly remains compact, uh, and most proteins are fully glycosylated. So uh, we call this the non-signaling complex, again, because the IL-1 cytokine binding site is occluded. And uh, the distance plots between uh, subdomain 3 of IL-1R1 extracellular domain and IL-1RACP um, keeps uh, a very stable uh, distance value in all my simulations, the blue plots. And application of accelerated MD that you can see the results uh, in blue and red plots only led to more dynamic, uh, more stable dynamics. So uh, the compact complex will remain compact in our simulation and it's non-signaling. And another set of simulations was where I um, did uh, the dynamics for the extracellular domain of IL-1R1 in the extended form in complex with IL-1RACP. Here I, sh uh, I observed that the extended complex seems to be locked in the extended form by the, uh, by the interaction uh, from the two interconnected glycans, meaning if you look at here, the two glycans from the two proteins make contacts with the other protein and basically keep the signaling, um, keep the signaling extended uh, conformation in the extended form. Uh, if I want to summarize this part, so we showed IL-1R1 forms two types of uh, 
uh, assemblies. One is the compact one that you can um, that you can show uh, you can see its formation in figures one in figures A and B, and this is a non-signaling complex, and it can act as a down regulatory mechanism for IL one or one functioning and the immune response that are connected to IL one or one signaling. And another, and it also forms another signaling um, complex or assembly that is formed by extended IL-1 or one and the IL-1 or SCP. You can see its formation in um, in figures C and D, and then binding. So because it's extended, then the cytokine here IL-1 beta can bind to it, and then does it can triggers the signals to the cell uh, and leads to uh, immune response in our body. Uh, so, so far we have studied glycosylation, binding of IL-1 beta to it, and how the accessory protein binding uh, leads to formation of two types of assemblies. But to complete this picture, uh, there is another important factor, and that is a homologous uh, receptor very similar to shape to IL-1 or 1 that's called interleukin-1 receptor type 2. IL-1 or 2, again, has three immunoglobulin-like subdomains in the extracellular domain. Same as IL-1 or 1, it is glycosylated. An interesting thing, it can bind to the same sets of cytokines even with higher affinity on the cell, but it misses the intracellular TIR domain. So it can bind to the ligands on the extracellular, but it cannot send any signal to the cell. Uh, and we wanted to see how this IL-1 or 2 compete with IL-1 or 1 on the cell surface to regulate the immune response. Um, this part was done in collaboration with Nargis Jamshidi, who is a uh, MSc student in Dr. Shahadi's lab. And uh, so we are going to study this. Nargis showed that... Sorry, uh, you have four, four minutes left. Three. Okay. Nargis showed that um, the IL-1 or, the IL-1 or 2 uh, upon glycosylation is maintained in the extended form compared to the unglycosylated form. The plot shows the radius of gyration for IL-1 or 2 average over all simulations, and you can see that the IL-1 or 2 mainly remains in the extended form. This is the opposite of what we have observed for IL-1 or 1, and as IL-1 or 2 can bind to the same sets of cytokines with higher binding affinity, then it suppresses the immune response, basically. If I want to summarize all of our observations in one sentence, I can say, that increase of the blood uh, increase of the blood sugars uh, increase of the level of blood sugar could lead to suppression of the IL-1 or 1 involved immune response because of the keeping the IL-1 or 1 in the compact conformation and thus suppressing the immune response by by basically uh, suppressing its ligand binding and by increasing the binding affinity of IL-1 or 2 to the same sets of cytokines with that, I want to thank uh, Reza Shahadi for his continuous support in the last two years. Nargis, who provided the figure and the plots for the last part of the talk. I am also thankful to Shadi Rahnama, who is a PhD student of Dr. Shadi's lab, and she collaborates with me on a project on the role of glycans in SARS-CoV-2 infectivity. I didn't mention the project because of the time here. And we are all grateful to Sharif High Performance Computing Center for providing the computational resource of this work and to you, of course, for your attention. I am happy to take your questions. That's it. Okay, thank you very much, Maria, for your talk and for being in time. Uh, so we have time for some questions, couple of questions. So please. There are no questions. No I guess questions. there was too much of biology in it. People here are all physicists. I have something. Okay. No. I I have a cur I have a curiosity. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So so thanks for your talk. So, so the um, in, in the glycosylation is there does the sugar form um, is there a chemical reaction that happens with the protein or what exactly happens there? So what happens is I couldn't explain it much. Uh, can you see the slides or not? Yeah, yes. So these are the typical uh, sugars, let's say uh, from the from the left um, from the left figure, this is the most simple one, for example. Uh, this one in the uh, when your protein is built up, basically, you have a polypeptide and it's uh, it has to have a 3D fold, right? Mm -hmm. When the 3D fold um, is being it calls 
it's called translation. And after the translation is done, there are some decoration occurring on different proteins. One of the most famous decorations is attachment of these glycans, and this is certainly an enzymatic activity. Usually, it, it occurs with the O, o transferase, glycosyl transferase, that it's an enzyme that uses ATP in the cell to attach these blocks of sugars to different specific sites on your protein. Okay. Okay. And these sites are mentioned here. There should be a motif for it. The motif is where you have an asparagine, you have any amino acid except proline, and then you have serine or threonine. So this is the motif, but this is not a must rule. Sometimes so, it may get decorated, yeah. sometimes it may not. So, so, so I mean, just a general, are the current force fields uh, designed and able to handle um, uh, the carbohydrates and things like that? Here, uh, all the glycans are presented by glycam 06 force field. That uh -huh. is uh, basically the most, the most established full atom force field for the glycans that I am aware of. And okay. all the protein residues are presented by amber force field. I see. All right, thanks. You're welcome. OK, so thank you very much, Mariam. We have no more time for questions. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again. So we. Uh, Pass to the next speaker, who is Katere Assisi. 